My name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GMAT. We have been working on the math problems out of this book here, the official guide to GMAT 2019. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number nine. Day, day nine. We are on page number 154. We're going to pick up from the very first problem that you see on that page. It is important, as I always remind you, it is important that you have the book in front of you so that you can read the problem yourself. So here's what the problem says from the very first problem on page number 100, 154. Problem number 54. In problem number 54, we are given a little graph here. Let's just see what we can do here. We're just going to make the approximate. That's not going to do the job. Let me try it again. Well, this graph, as you can see in the book, shows the height of the height of the height of the tide in feet. And here is the time. The question simply is, what's the difference? What's the difference between the highest highest tide and the lowest tide? It's not much in there. There's a lot of fuss about nothing at all. Highest tide, as you can clearly see in the picture here, takes place here. That's where it's the highest. And it actually tells you that at that point, it happens to be, it happens to be 11:30 at night, which is of no interest to us as to what time it is because nobody is asking us about the time. What we are interested in is that it is 2.2, 2.2 feet. The highest tide is 2.2 feet. Minus the lowest tide, which which we are told, it happens at. Again, we are not interested in the time. We are not interested in the time, but it, it happens at 1800, 6 p.m., and that happens to be negative. This is the time here, and that happens to be negative half a feet. Whatever their marker is, it goes half a, half a foot below that. So that's what it is: 2.2 feet minus half a feet. So it's essentially 2.2 minus minus 0.5, and a minus and a minus is going to become positive. So it's 2.2 plus 0.5, and that's going to be 2.7. And that's your answer choice E. Answer choice E. Do not end up subtracting 2.4.5 from 2.7. You're going to end up getting a wrong answer. This will be answer choice A. A is wrong. The correct answer is E. And that's all it is. That's all they want to see here. That's all they want to see that you can pay the pay attention here that it is minus a negative quantity. A minus a negative quantity becomes positive. That's all it is. That's all they want to see here. Let's move on. No need to make a fuss about it. The next one. And the next one, they give us a they give us a series that looks like this. We are told that the sum of a series is equal to 1 over 1 squared plus 1 over 2 squared plus 1 over 3 squared plus 1 over 4 squared I'm going to write them out all of I'm going to write out all of them 1 over 5 squared 1 over 6 squared there is a reason there is a reason why I'm writing all of them out just be patient 1 over 8 squared 1 over 9 squared and finally 1 over 10 squared I shouldn't have taken so much room in the beginning and our job is to figure out what the sum is. Of course, we're not going to sit there and try to figure out the precise value of this sum because that's not what we're looking for. If you look at the answer choices, if you look at the answer choices, we simply have to establish whether it is more than three or equal to three or somewhere between two and three um, as, I, as I look through the answer choices A, B, and C, or whether it's exactly equal to two or whether it is less than two. That's all it is. We just have to figure out whether it's less than two or between two and three or equal to two or equal to three or more than three. That's what we're going to do. We're going to approximate, okay? So let's begin. We're just going to approximate because we're not going to, obviously we're not going to sit here. So here, here we go. 
1 over 1 squared, 1 squared is just 1, that's just 1. So we're not going to worry about that. Just think, think of this as a dollar. This is 1 dollar. Now think of these as cents. And we're going to figure out how many cents they are. 1 over, one over 2 squared is 1 fourth. 1 over 3 squared is 1 ninth. And then we'll have 1 sixteenth, 1 twenty-fifth, 1 thirty-sixth. That should be 1 twenty-fifth, 1 over 5 squared. 1 over 5 squared is going to be 1 25th, 1 36th, 1 49th, 1 64th, 1 81, and 100. Because so that was 1 over 10 squared. Now, of course, you understand, I obviously, I don't need to point out the obvious thing, that in a real exam, you're not going to be so damn stupid to actually write everything out. You just have to look at it and just analyze it in your mind, okay? I'm writing it out for our benefit, so it's easier to follow the work. So let's begin. A quarter of a dollar, how much is a quarter of a dollar? A quarter of a dollar is 25 cents. How much is one nine? Do you know? This is something you have to know. One nine, one nine is point one repeating. It's point one repeating. It's just gonna it's just gonna go on and on and on. Point one 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 as you can see, one over nine. If you divide uh, one over nine, if you divide one by nine, one by nine, we have to introduce the decimal. And then we, well, as soon as we introduce this, it becomes 10, it goes into one time, it's 9, we have a remainder of 1, it becomes 10 again, it goes one time, it becomes 9, we have a 1 again, it just goes on and on. Similarly, 2 over 9, 2 9 is simply going to be 0.2 repeating. 3 over 9, 3 over 9 is going to be what? It's, if, if 1 over 9 is 0.1 repeating, 1 over 2, 2 over 2 9 is 0.2 repeating, 3 9 should be 0.3 repeating. 3 9 is 0.3 repeating, which is which is no, no surprise to us because we know 3 9 is simply a third. And everybody knows the third is simply 0.3 repeating. Similarly, 4 9 is 0.4 repeating, 5 9 is going to be 5 9 is going to be this point, 5 9 is going to be 0.5 repeating, and 6 9 will be 6. You get the idea. That's all. So, these are some basic things we have to know. You understand? So that we can save time in the exam. So, let's pick up where we left off. So, 1 9 is about 11 cents. What about 1 16th? This is where the approximation begins to come in. I'm going to pretend, I'm going to pretend that this is 1 20th. Even though it's not, it's a little bit more than that. It's more than 1 20th. Let's just pretend it's 1 20th. That's going to be about 5 cents. 1 25th of a dollar is 4 cents. 1 36th, let's just pretend 1 36th is 1 33rd. Even though 1 36th is a little bit less than that, but that's okay. A third, 1 33rd of a dollar is about a 3 cents. 1 49th, 149, let's just pretend that it is 150th. And this is all of this thing you have to do it in your head. You understand? This is just a quick approximation. 150th of a dollar is 2 cents. If you have a 50th of a dollar, it's 2 cents. 164 is going to be a little bit more than a cent. 181, 181st one, one is also going to be a little bit more than a cent. It's not a, it's not a cent, it's not 2 cents. It's more than a cent, but it's less than two cents. Same thing here. This is between one and two cents. So let's just pretend that together they are three cents. And finally, one one hundredth of a dollar is one cent. All you have to do is quickly add them up. Quickly add them up. Don't make a fuss about it. So let's, 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 let's quick, quickly add them up. I see a five. I see a five. That's a ten. Uh, I see a four and I see a one. That's another five. So five plus five plus five that's fifteen. Fifteen plus three is eighteen. Eighteen plus eleven. Eighteen plus eleven. It's going to be 9, 9 and 29 and another 25, 4, there you go. All of this thing, all of this thing approximates to about a dollar and 54 cents, 1.54. Because this is the dollar, we forgot the dollar. See, we did not forget it, we left it out, you understand? So it's 1.54 and therefore it is less than 2. Therefore it is less than 2. The question, the question was, which of the following answers gives us the... Which of the following is true? The answer is the sum is less than 2. The sum is less than 2. This is the sum here. The sum is less than 2. And that answer would be E. But it has to be done quickly. It has to be done too quickly. You just have to look at it and say that's 1, 1 4, that's going to be 25 cents, 1 over 9 is going to be 11 cents, 1 over 16 is going to be about, well, let's just pretend it's 120, that's going to be 5 cents, 1 25th, 1 25th is a 4 cents. 1 64th, 1 64th, let's just pretend, 1 64th, where were we? So we were at 1 25th was 4 cents, this is 3 cents, ah, 
164 was 3 cents because we, we approximated 164 164 oh sorry 136 that's where I get confused this is 136 6 squared is not 64 is 136 136 we approximated as 1 third 1 33rd and that's about 3 cents then we get to 1, 1 over 7 squared which is 1 over 49 which is about 1 over 50 which is about 2 cents 164 and 1, 8, 1, 8, 1 over 80, 81 together they're going to be about about 3 cents which is what this is 3 cents and finally 1 one hundred of a dollar is 1 cent just add them up that's all and if you're off by a couple of cents it's not going to make any difference because it's still going to be less than it's still going to be it's still it is still going to come out to be less than two dollars because it's around dollar dollar fifty five dollar fifty four dollar fifty six somewhere there let's go to the next one number fifty six in number fifty six in number fifty six we are told that we are running a factory we are running a factory and from from the past experience we know we know that between point three 0.3% to 0.5% of the parts are going to be defective. They're going to be defective. We are told that the retail price, retail price of our part is 2,500. It is 2,500. That's what we sell them for. And we are also told that We also told that when a customer calls up and tells us that he or she has received a defective part, we don't argue with them, we don't bicker with them, we simply offer them a full refund. Full refund. That's it. If you, if you get a defective part, we'll give you a full refund. The question simply is, how much money that we're going to spend, how much money are we going to spend on giving the refunds if we go to manufacture 20,000 parts? For example, if you were to man if you are manufacturing 20,000 parts a week or 20,000 parts a month, I want to know what is going to be the monthly expense for refunds on a 20,000 dollar part, uh, 20,000 20, 20, 20, parts rather, given the fact that between 0.3 and 0.5 percent of all the parts that we manufacture are going to be defective. That's something we know for a fact from the past experience. So let's find out, shall we? Let's find out. 0.3 percent, 0.3, 0.3 percent means over 100. That's 0.3 percent. 0.5 is similarly 0.5 over 100. We don't want to deal with 0.3, do you? Let's convert this 0.3 into a whole number by multiplying top and bottom by 10. Multiply top and bottom by 10, 0.3 times 10 becomes 3. So it becomes a 3 over 1,000. 3 over 1,000. And again, multiply top and bottom by 10 here. And 0.5 times 10 is going to give us 5 over 1,000. In other words, in other words, for every 1,000 parts that we manufacture, for every 1,000 parts that we manufacture, between three to five parts are going to be defective. Either three, four, or five parts are going to be defective out of every 1,000. We're not manufacturing 1,000 parts. We're manufacturing 20,000 parts. So if we're manufacturing 20,000 parts, let's just multiply the whole thing by 20. Because this is out of 1,000. This is five defective parts out of every 1,000 parts. Therefore, if it's five out of every 1,000 parts, times 20 will represent the number of parts out of every 20,000. So this is how many defective parts we expect to have. 3 times 20 is 60. And now since, since we multiply the top by 20, we have to multiply the bottom by 20. I left that out. Again, same thing here. We're multiplying top and bottom by 20 because we want to get it out to 20,000. So we're going to have 60, 60 defective parts out of every 20,000 defect, out of every 20,000 parts that we manufacture. Similarly here, the high point is 5 times 20, which is 100 parts out of out of every 20,000 parts that we are manufacturing. So between 60 and 100 parts out of, of 20,000, I'm going to raise this 20,000 now, we don't, we don't need it anymore. And let's just figure out the amount of refund, given the fact that, the, that, that, we, sell this, that, sell, that we sell this part for $2,500. So $2,500 times 60, so let's, let's, let's get going. Six, uh, there are zero, 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 there are three zeros here, so let's put down the three zeros. And six times 25 is 150. It's 150. How do we know? Because 25 times four is 100, and 25 times six would be 150. So that's the low end, $150,000 in, in refunds we're gonna have to give, or in the worst case scenario, multiply this by 25. And again, we have four zeros now. 
one, two, three, four. So the comma is going to go here for a thousand, and twenty-five times one is twenty-five. So the answer is how much? How much refund are we going to issue? Somewhere between somewhere between one hundred fifty thousand dollars to two hundred fifty thousand dollars. That's what we expect to have refunds, and that will be our answer choice D. That's answer choice D. Let's move on to 57. Let's move on to 57. In 57, we are being asked what's the, what's the area of the patio? What's the area of the patio? Patio that looks like this. Our patio looks like this. We have a house here. This is the house. And we have built a patio here. And that's our patio. The picture is not drawn to scale. I was not being I was, I was not being very very careful, so it's not drawn to scale. And then, then they give us some dimensions here, obviously. We are told that from here, from here to here is 15 feet. From here to here we are told is 40 feet. We are told that from here to here is 20 feet. And this distance we are told is 35 feet. How do we figure out the area of patio? The area of patio that we are looking for, the area of patio that we are looking for is simply is simply this area here that you see here. You see, if we complete this thing here, we're going to complete this thing here. Let's, let's erase this word house so it doesn't get in the way. This is the house here. So complete this thing here. And of course, you understand. You understand that every single angle that we see, this angle, that angle, that angle, every single angle that we see, they are all right angles, even though I did not say it, but, but they, they make a point of actually uh, stating it explicitly that all of these are right, angle, right angles. In other words, they make, a, they make a perfect rectangle. Do you understand? So, let's keep going, shall we? If we can somehow figure out, if we can figure out the area of this guy, if we can somehow figure out the area of this guy, we, can, we know the figure. It's 40 times 35. 40 times 35. The area of the patio is simply going to be 40 times 35. 40 times 35, which will be this entire thing that you see here. Let's call this thing. Let's just call it thing A B C D. That's the, that's this guy A B C D A B C D. And somehow we have to subtract the area of this guy right here. So let's see what we can do. Okay, here's what's going on. This is 15 feet from here to here is 15 feet. And we know the entire length from C to D is 35 feet. If that's the case, then this distance from here to here must be 20 feet. So far, so good. Similarly, even though it doesn't look like it because I was, uh, it's not drawn to scale, I was, I was being sloppy, but we are told that B to C is 40 feet. If B to C is 40, and from here to D is 20, then this distance must be 20. Because 20 plus 20 has to, has to add up to 40. So this is 20 and this is 20. In other words, this shaded part that we see here, which is not part of the patio, which is not part of the patio, is simply 20 by 20. There we go. That's our patio. Because whatever is left over is the patio. So we take the area of A, B, C, D, which is 40 by 35, and just simply subtract this part, which is 20 by 20. That's fine now, shall we? 20 by 20 is very easy. It's just 400. What, the, what is this thing? Ah, that's very easy also. That's also very simple. 35 times 2. Do you know how much 35 times 2 is? Of course you do. 35 times 2 is 70. If 235, if 235 is 70, then 435 must be 140. If 2 times 35 is 70, then 4 times 35 must be 140. 140, and then we have a 0 here that has to be put here. So it's just 1400 minus 4, which is 1000 square feet. Apparently, they built a patio of, nice patio of 1000 square feet. And that's answer choice C. That's answer choice C. Let's move on, shall we? 58. 
In number 58, we are told, we are told, let's do it on the top. Why, why do it at the bottom here? We are done with this thing. What is the approximate value? What is the approximate value of square root of 4.2 times 1590 over 15.7? Well, let's see what we can do. And if they are looking for approximate value, then that's exactly what we're going to do. Obviously, we're not going to be damn silly. They are just trying to figure out the exact value of this thing by hand. So let's do that. This, this amount, this quantity that we see is approximately equal to the square root of 4.2, 4.2. Would you agree that 4.2 is about 4? It's approximately 4. 4.2 is approximately 4. 1590 is approximately 1600. 1590 is approximately 1600. And 15.7, would you agree that 15.7 is about 16? It's about 16. So far so good? That's it, we're done. 1600 divided by 16 is going to be 100, so it's just simply square root of 4 times 100. Because 16 divided by 1600, it's just going to be 100. So it's 4 times 100, square root of 4, square root of 4 is 2, and square root of 100 is 10, so it's 20. The value of this guy is approximately 20. The value of that quantity that, that is given to us is approximately 20. And that's our answer choice A. That's our answer choice A. Let's move on. Number 59. In number 59, we have five employees, we are told. It says the sum of the weekly salaries of five employees is 3,250. This is number 59. We have five employees and the sum of the salary sum is equal to, we are told, 3,250. 3, if, if the sum is 3,250, then the average must be 3,250 divided by 5. Because later on in the problem, they tell us that the average has gone up by 10%. Or before, we, before we worry about the fact that the average salary has gone up by 10%, we have first have to figure out what the average salary was, which is what we are doing right now. So let's get going, shall we? How many, how many five does three have? Three has no fives. Three has no five. Three is too puny to have any fives. So he goes to his next door neighbor and says, why don't you join me? We can, I can't take the five by myself, but together we can, well, I was going to say, beat something out of him. So how many, how many five, how many, how many fives does 32 have? 32 has six fives. Six fives are 30. Six fives are 30. After we take away 30 from 32, we have a remainder of two. What happens is that two, two goes and joins the fives and becomes 25. And 25 has five fives. How many 5 does 0 have? 0 has no 5's. Since we divide the top by 5, we must divide the bottom by 5. In other words, in other words the average salary was 650. Later on, they tell us, later on, they tell us that the average has gone up by 10%. Well, if average has, average has gone up by 10%, 10% 10 of 650 is 65. Average salary has gone up by $65. Let's do number 60. In number 60, we are told that we have X dollars per hour for the first 40 hours. We are getting paid X dollars per hour for the first 40 hours. And after that, we are going to get $22 per hour for anything above 40 hours. If we work more than 40 hours, then anything above 40 hours, we're going to get paid $22 an hour. We are further told that the total earnings total earnings for the week total earnings for the week is $816. And we are told that we work 48 hours. The question simply is the question simply is, the question simply is, what's the value of x? Given the fact that we worked 
given the fact that we worked a total of 48 hours for which we got paid $816 and for the work of 48 hours and given the fact that we get paid X dollars per hour for the first 40 hours and $22 per hour for anything above 40 hours what's the value of X? So let's find out, shall we? Let's find out. So, if we work if we work 40 hours and we get X dollars per hour then for the first 40 hours, for the first 40 hours we're going to get 40 times X. For example, if X happens to be the $15 per hour, if it's $15 per hour, then if we work 5 hours, it will be 5 times 15. If we work 10 hours, per, 10 hours, we're going to be 10 times 15. If we work 40 hours, it's going to be 14 times, 40 times 15. So that's, that's the amount of money we're going to get paid for the first 40 hours, 40 times X. After that, anything above that, we get $22 per hour. And how many hours did we work above 40? Well, it's right here. We worked a total of 48 hours, which means we worked 8 hours that were above 40. Or if you want to be too pedantic, you can do it as 48 minus 40. But that's not necessary. I don't know when we learned this word in the vocabulary. We'll find out in a second. So that's it. So $22, $22 per hour for the next 8 hours and that amount has to equal to 816. And we just have to figure out what X is. So, Let's subtract, let's subtract 22 times 8 from both sides and let's find out what 22 times 8 is. 22 times 8, 8 to the 16, 6, 6 carry 1, 16 plus 1 is 17. In other, words, in other words, 22 times 8 is 176. Let's subtract 176 from both sides. 22 times 8 minus 22 times 8, it's they're going to cross each other, cancel each other out, which was the whole point. And 22 times 8, we just found out is 176. So we just have to figure out what is 816 minus 176. 6 minus 6 is 0. 11 minus 7 is going to be 4. 7 minus 1 is going to be 6. There we go. 640 equals 40x. 640 equals 40x. Let's divide both sides by 10. So the 0 drops out. And let's divide both sides by 4. And 64 has 64 has 16 4. 16 4 is 64. There we go x equals 16. We are getting paid $16 per hour for the first 40 hours that we're going to work. Anything above that, we're going to get paid $22 an hour. And if that's the case, then if we happen to work 48 hours in a week, then we can expect to walk away with a gross salary, with a gross salary of $816. Do you understand? I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now. Oh, we, we never talked about this for pedantic. In case you're curious, and so am I, as to when we learned it, because I am pretty sure that we learned it, but I'm not 100% sure. But that simply means to show off one's learning, to show off one's knowledge. Like I said, we don't have to put down here, we could have written there as 48 minus 40, 48 minus 40, but you can simply write down 8, we don't have to be pedantic, we don't have to show off so much. Pedantic. I can't find it right now. I'll look it up and I'll tell you in the next video. Okay? Bye now.